I want to take a moment and look at the recurring uh, line options with vendors and with customers. And I'm going to start on the purchasing side and we're going to look at a vendor and let me pull up my vendor. So under the navigate option, if you go to purchases, there's an option for recurring purchase lines. And what this allows me to do is to set up a code with a description. And if I click on the card, option. Uh, this is going to allow me to set up the uh, line items or the distributions uh, that I want to create on a regular basis for this particular vendor. So you'll notice that my line types are consistent with other documents in the purchasing area. So GL accounts, items, resources, fixed assets, or even charge items if I want to do that. I could select my item, description, quantity, unit of measure, uh, and then amount. I can also default some uh, dimensional values if I want to. On this main window here, um, what you'll see is there's this option to, uh, three options, to either manually uh, insert these lines, automatically insert them, or, or, or automatically ask that the lines be in, uh, inserted. I'm going to show you how this works. Um, just as a little caveat, if you're entering a transaction off of, let's say, the purchase uh, invoice window or off of the purchase order window, um, these prompts aren't going to show up. So I'm going to show you how to uh, create those anyway. Um, but let's walk through actually creating a document and see how this works. So from my vendor list, I'm going to say new and I'm going to say uh, purchase order. And I'm going to tab off of the vendor name. And then what you'll see is that I'm prompted up here in the top uh, with a message that says I have recurring lines that are available for my vendor. Do I want to insert them? I could say get recurring lines and then I'm presented with a window that's going to show me the uh, recurring transaction configurations that I have for this vendor. So I can select yes or click the one I want and you'll notice that the lines are now created automatically on, uh, in this case, my purchase order. If, um, if I started from the purchase order window itself, so let me just delete that one so we know it's not there, and I'm going to go to purchasing, purchase orders, and I'm going to create a new one from here. Select my same vendor. You'll notice directly on the purchase order window, I'm not presented with a prompt. So what I need to do then is if I go to actions and functions, I can say get recurring purchase lines, and then I'm presented my list. I can click OK, and they're now created uh, on my purchase uh, order document. Purchase invoices work uh, in an identical way. Uh, the returns also work the same. All right, let's go to look at the customer next. So I'm going to pick up my customer. And if we go to navigate sales, and then I've got an option for recurring sales lines, uh, you'll notice that uh, I have a few more options on the uh, sales recurring line side of the uh, Business Central system. But let's go to the card first. You'll notice that I have the same uh, line options that we saw on the payable side. So GL accounts, items, resources, fixed assets, charged items available on the uh, receivable side of the house. My item lookup, description, unit of measure, quantity, uh, and dimensions identical. Same options here on always ask, manual, or automatic. And it's the same caveat in terms of when those uh, options are used. If I start right from the customer, the automatic um, and the prompt uh, will work. And then if not, I'm going to have to go manually add those lines. But I'll show you how that works in a bit. You'll notice that we have a few extra uh, options here. So we've got some uh, date validation and then some other setup information. On the sales uh, side of the uh, Business Central, we have the ability to actually generate recurring invoices. So if you've got a, a scenario where you need to do recurring billing, um, there is some automated functionality within Business Central that can assist with that. So I'll show you that next. But let's start with uh, my customer list again. I'm going to enter a new document, which is going to be a sales order and tab off of my customer. You'll see that the prompt is very similar here that says get recurring lines. So when I get recurring lines, I'm presented with the list of uh, recurring line configurations that I have for my customer. And I click OK, and you'll notice the lines have been dropped in just like we saw on the uh, AP side. I'm going to delete that. And if we go to the sales and sales invoices, um, and I create a new document from here, select my customer. You'll notice I'm not presented when I start directly from a sales invoice. So we need to go to actions, functions, and then um, we've got an option here for get recurring sales lines uh, that I can use to create manually uh, the sales lines just like we saw on the AP side. The additional functionality we have um, on the 
receivable side is the ability to create a recurring transaction. So I'm going to look up create recurring. And we've got this option for create recurring sales invoices. I'm going to select that option. What this is going to allow us to do is to uh, select an order date, a posting date, uh, select the customer, the customer range that I want to generate invoices for, and then the code that I want to use. So if I've got, again, a scenario where I've got recurring um, billing that I need to do to my customers, uh, I can set uh, this up. I click OK. It's going to generate then uh, the set of invoices that meet that criteria. In my case, I only have one. You'll notice we just got the uh, datum invoice down here. Open it up, and I've got my line items that were set up with my uh, recurring code monthly for my customer. So encourage everybody to check this out. If you've got a scenario where you've got recurring billing on the AR side or repetitive lines um, on the AR side, um, and you also have the option on the AP side if you've got a, a consistent account distribution or um, even line items for that matter um, that you want to create uh, for the vendor.